Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Do you want to become insanely successful? Do you want to be the go-to guru in your industry? Do you want to be talked about for all the right reasons? For over 40 years, Kevin Harrington has helped people just like you become significant influencers. Now he's broken the process down in the key person of influence roadmap, and it's yours for free. Just text KPI to him at 727-888-2100. Text KPI to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free step-by-step guide. Text KPI to 727-888-2100 to get the recognition you deserve and experience the success as the go-to voice everyone listens to in your industry today. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be interviewing Dr. Gleb Sapersky. He is an internationally recognized thought leader known as a disaster avoidance expert. He has been featured in over 550 articles, 450 interviews in Time, Fast Company, CBS News, Inc. Magazine. He's written several best-selling books including Never Go With Your Gut, How Pioneering Leaders Make the Best Decisions and Avoid Business Disasters, and his newest best-selling book, which we're going to talk about today, which is published by Changemaker Books called Resilience, Adapt and Plan for the New Abnormal of the Coronas Ni- a COVID-19 Coronavirus Pandemic. Dr. Gleb, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate you welcoming me, Seth. All right, so let's go back in time. How does one get started as a disaster avoidance expert? Because in all honesty, <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, actually, you want them to first understand what about disa- what are disasters? Disasters are something that really significantly negatively impacts your bottom line, your career, your finances. Those are disasters. And when you look at where disasters come from, they come from bad decisions. And there are only two types of decisions that lead to disasters. One is our active decisions that lead to disasters. So if we make a decision or a series of decisions that lead to a disaster, or if we fail to predict a disaster coming up and not make a decision to address the disaster in advance. Those are the two types of decisions from which disasters come, right? So not avoiding a disaster or actively leading to a disaster. And where, so I studied decision making, how do we avoid these disasters? And I first became interested in because my parents actually, because of, when I was a kid, I saw my parents getting into a lot of fights with each other. They were making a whole bunch of bad decisions. So for example, my mom likes to buy nice clothing. So she'd go out, she'd buy a hundred dollar sweater. And my dad was kind of a cheap kid, So she'd come home and he'd yell at her say, no one should, you know, no sweater should be worth over $20 and they go at it fighting and so on. And I saw them do it and it was painful for me as a kid to see them do it. It was stressful, but I also saw that it was kind of dumb because they weren't changing their behavior. My mom kept buying sweaters, my dad kept yelling at her. And so I became fascinated with this. And you know what? When I went out into the public world, when I grew older, I realized that no one else is different. People are doing yeah. the same sort of dumb stuff all the time including top business leaders, top politicians of all sorts. So I wanted to find out how do we make, why do we make these bad decisions and how can we avoid them? And that's how I became a disaster avoidance expert. That was the start of my journey. I started studying decision making. And as I started studying it, people started asking me about it. So I became a coach, trainer, consultant. I've been doing that since 1999. And I also had to go into academia because that's really where you study decision making because the stuff out there and going with your gut, trusting your intuition, not good. Don't trust that. That is not helpful. You need to look at the academic journals about how and why we make bad decisions because our brain is screwed up in a variety of fun and twisted ways. And we can talk about that. So that's what I studied. I studied cognitive biases, the dangerous judgment errors we make because of how our brain is wired, specifically how to address them, how to defeat these cognitive biases in our careers, in our relationships, and now most recently with COVID-19. All right, so I think you packed probably half an hour into that la- into that five minute answer. I think we the longer version is probably in both your books and in a couple hundred articles that you've been interviewed for and written. So right. 
Okay, so let's unpack. So we're obviously the new book. What? How did the new book come about? Because you have a book about the coronavirus pandemic out already, and it's been less than it's four crazy. months since it started. So talk yeah. about that. Well, so that's a decision that you made and a cognitive bias is. to get a book out about the topic <laughs> that fast. It is a decision. So what happened was I was just on a book tour to promote my previous book. So that came out, uh, Never Go With Your Gut came out in November 2019. And all of my book, in-person book events were canceled, <laughs> as you can imagine. No more of those. So my publisher, so I work with a number of publishers. One of my publishers is Changemakers Books, which is an imprint of John Hunt Publishing. The publisher there, a good friend of mine, came to me and he said, Hey, Gleb, I know all of your book tours were canceled. And as a, at the same time, I published a number of articles early onward in the pandemic saying about how we're making really bad mistakes in Inc., Business Insider, Columbus Dispatch, and so on. And he said, okay, I saw these articles, good stuff, I know you have time, why don't you write a book about this? And I'm like, uh, I, all right, let's try this. And he wanted it out in record time. He wanted it out in... Uh, in June. So I was writing it, writing it, writing it. And then he's like, okay, we're now we're moving up the timeline to May. And I'm like, what? <laughs> really, Tim? How are you doing? His name is Tim Ward. Why? And he's like, well, we really need to get this out. You know, there are a lot of uh, people who are suffering right now. And he knew that my book can really help them. And that's Changemaker's book is about making a positive change in the world. So he, I, he really you know, got the whip out and I was writing it very, very quickly. And so I got it out, they got it out there, and I really admire Changemaker's books for getting it out there quickly, John Hunt Publishing. So they, they did a great job, and I was really pretty stressed out with the, at the end of that process. I, I, I bet, because normally it might be six months to a year before they're expecting a manuscript, but obviously yep. the coronavirus topic so timely, obviously yeah. trying to get it out while still in the peak of it or before anything else happened. So what are, since you started talking about that, what are some of the bad decisions that we're making in the last few months? So we need to understand where bad decisions come from. Our bad decisions from our gut reactions come because our brain, our gut reactions, our emotions, our intuitions, whatever you call it, they aren't wired for the modern environment. That's not what they're for. They're wired for the savanna environment. There are instincts. You know, you might have heard of the lizard brain. That's what it is. That's what they are about. We lived in, in that time, in the savanna environment, we lived in small tribes of 15 people to 150 people. And our primary response to threats was the fight or flight response. We had, we had, you might have heard of it as the saber-toothed tiger response, when we had to jump at 100 shadows to get away from that one saber-toothed tiger. Well, guess what? We have many less saber-toothed tigers in the modern environment, but we still react to threats like COVID-19 with a saber-toothed tiger response. So a bunch of people had the flight response. They ignored the information. They said, okay, it's not happening. They flee. It's a flee response from the information because it's so terrible. So they flee from the information, ignore it, not real. That's one type of bad response with the fight or flight. The other type of bad response is the immediate fight response, where people go to the stores, empty the shelves, buy up the toilet paper and all the canned goods that you know they won't ever eat because you know who eats canned old canned meat, right? So that's not going to be good. Uh, that's one thing. And of course, business leaders use, do the same thing in a way who didn't flee from the information, the fight response, they went to their business continuity plans. They're, but business, I'm a disaster avoidance expert. I did do a bunch of these business continuity plans. I can tell you, they're great for emergencies. They're great for when there's kind of a blizzard or like when Houston got flooded, there's a one week to two week interruption. But they're terrible for a long-term major disruption like the COVID-19 pandemic. That's not, what they're, that's not what they're for. And we are terrible at dealing with slow moving high impact train wrecks like COVID-19. And there are three cognitive biases in particular I want to highlight. Three specific ways we go very wrong with things like COVID-19, slow moving high impact train wrecks that are low probability. One is called the normalcy bias. Now in the Savannah environment, it was pretty safe bet that the future would be much like today. You know, the seasons would pass by you know, and so on, but the future would be much like today. In the current environment, that's a bad bet because we have so many disruptions, whether technology disruptions, major ones, you know, but your life and my life, you know, we, you and I still remember that in, you know, the, how you sign up to AOL and go, ee ee that sound, we have a freaky sound. Dial up, yeah. Exactly, you still remember that, but you know, most millennials, uh, younger millennials, uh, Gen Z's folks don't. 
w that's a, such a major disruption. We still have that mindset that many people don't. That's, a, that's one. Of course, the financial crisis of 2008, 2009, huge disruption. COVID-19, major disruption. But what it feels like, it doesn't feel real. There's still so many people who want to go back to normal. That's called the normalcy bias. They think that the future will be much like today. And that's how it feels. Our gut reaction still can't process that our future is changed forever by COVID-19. Our world will never go back to January 2020, that innocent time. It will never go back to that time. It feels very tough. It feels hard to accept it, but it's very true. You know, with even the vaccine, let's say we get lucky and we have a vaccine by or approved by early 2021. That's we'll still have to have six to 12 months of production, distribution, vaccination, and only 50% of the people are willing to take a vaccine. So that's not going to be great. So it's six to 12 months. So we will not deal with COVID-19 until 2020, late 2022, early 2023, even with a vaccine. And then we'll be facing waves of restrictions and loosenings. We're seeing that now. A number of states that opened up early, maybe too early, are now closing back down. Texas, Florida, and so on. And so people aren't realizing how our habits, values, norms, beliefs will change as a result of this, will change as a result of COVID-19. So even in the best case scenario where we get super lucky with a vaccine. So that's a normalcy bias. That's one of them. Second one, planning fallacy. Planning fallacy has to do with our plans. Now, we tend to be very confident about ourselves. We tend to be very confident about our plans. And we feel that our plans will always come true just because that's how it feels, because we like ourselves and our plans. But our plans very often don't survive contact with the enemy. And this is a bad problem because so many people are still going with their pre-existing life plans, business plans. They have not figured out that they need to seriously pivot as a result of COVID-19 and really in a major way readjust their long-term plans to adapt to the pandemic, readjust the way they live their lives, their, their careers, their business orientation, and so on. And the last one, the third one, is called hyperbolic discounting. Now, in the Savannah environment, it was a good idea to live for the moment because we saw so many threats. It was such a chaotic and disruptive environment. We couldn't predict the future. And, you know, and if you kill the mammoth, you couldn't save the meat, so you want to eat all the meat you, that you can right now. In the modern environment, if you kill a mammoth, you can put it in the fridge. Well, hopefully you're not, you don't need that, but you can put your money in a bank, you can invest in your career, you can plan for the future of your company, and we don't tend to do that nearly enough. We still tend to, our gut reactions, overestimate the importance of the short term, underestimate the long term. This is why so many companies are move, rushing to reopen and they're really running into a screeching halt right now in a number of states that are closing down. A number of states opened up too quickly. So this is a bad problem. People aren't thinking about their careers. They need to pivot their careers, shift their careers for the long term. This is a bad problem. So these free cognitive biases are the biggest problems we're facing. So that makes a ton of sense. How do we identify if we're if we have those biases and then how do we overcome them and be resilient the first thing you need to do is figure out whether you're thinking about your life as though it's a normal thing have you actually decided what you're doing about the future are you seeing that we are going to be shifting a lot of our norms values beliefs in the future is that something you're realizing is that something you're thinking about have you thought it through are you or are you still falling into the normalcy bias so realizing that the world will not be normal is a fundamental fundamental first step for you and seeing where you might be falling into that trap is very important second one planning fallacy so if you want to address the planning fallacy you need to very seriously readjust your plans see where your plans need to be a pivot around the coronavirus pandemic and see where other people are going to be making mistakes because there are lots of people who will not be listening to this interview, unfortunately, who will not be looking to the future and who will be making serious mistakes going forward. And you want to readjust your plans. And third of all, value the long term. Look to the long term outcome. We, in a very optimistic scenario, would deal with COVID-19 by late 2022 with all the production, distribution, vaccination. That's a very optimistic scenario. It might push into 23, 24, 25. And you're also assuming right there that you've got a bias. You're assuming the vaccine is the solution. You're assuming it works. You're assuming people take it. You're assuming mm -hmm. that it stops the spread and people That's can right. get back to congregating in larger groups because they're all vaccinated. 
Exactly. So that's the very most optimistic scenario. That's the yeah. if we if we can. And I'm saying there are other scenarios which are going to be pretty much worse. You know, the first vaccine may be ineffective. It might take a while to get an effective vaccine. And you know what? We still don't have an effective vaccine for the flu. Our vaccine for the flu is only 50 percent effective. So if we are unlucky and COVID-19 proves to be as bad as the flu in terms of getting a vaccine, we won't have an effective vaccine. So how will we live with it in the long term? And that's something you need to figure out for yourself, that long term future. Valuing the long term is incredibly important. So all of this stuff is how you address the cognitive biases and how you address these specific things. Now, for overcoming them, you want to think about what the future will look like and anticipate the kind of shifts that are going to be going forward. What kind of shifts can you anticipate based on these outlooks of COVID-19 and other things accompanying COVID-19? And today in the news, there was information that there was another potential vi virus that was found in some pigs in China. So there's an, another seri potential serious threat. Doesn't look to be as bad as COVID-19, but that's pointing out that there are other threats are also on the horizon. Just because we're dealing with COVID-19, other things have not stopped. We need to realize that that's something that's part of our world. So what are you going to do in this current world, current situation? You want to think about orienting toward virtual interactions. I can't stress this enough. Virtual interactions are our future. This is the safest thing to be. If you want to hedge your bets, you want to orient toward virtual interactions being much more the case than in-person interactions are. And that applies to companies and individuals alike. And we can talk about what that means. But virtual interactions and everything around it is the key that you want to be thinking about. That makes a lot of sense. Now, your, it sounds like, you're predicting that this doesn't just go away, that it gets worse before and if it gets better, and that it causes a fundamental long-term shift. It's not a six-month, one-year, two-year shift in the way we think and the way we do business and the way we work. It sounds like you're predicting that this, I mean, if you think about it, if we go back to, let's say, 9-11, there was an immediate shift right away. And then since then, other than having from a consumer standpoint, and I'm ignorant, but other than having increased airport security, I don't know that it's changed the rest of our lives that much in, let's say, the last five years. You're and that was one isolated incident. You're obviously seeing COVID is a longer term issue that affects our ability to have large gatherings and pro sports and festivals for a very long time. Is that right? Did I get that right? You're absolutely right. And it's much more fundamentally impactful on people's behaviors than 9-11. The, 9-11 than is about a threat that's an isolated threat. So it's terrorist, it's external threat. It's not something people really face on a daily level, facing kind of in their everyday habits. Whereas what's happening with COVID-19 is it's something that permeates our whole lives. Think about the activities you do every day. You get up, you don't go to work right now. You go to your computer, you interact virtually. You, if you go outside, you need to wear a mask in most states. If you want to be careful about, probably not go to an indoor restaurant right now, maybe an outdoor restaurant. Look at how many, no, no sports ball of any sorts. No, lots of entertainment venues closed. Look at our lives. Our lives are fundamentally disrupted. How can we be the same? How can anyone imagine in their most ludic, you know, dreams, uh, you know, hopeful dreams, that we can, with this impact on our daily activities, our everyday lives, we'll never go back to the past. We are inherently, habitually changed on our most fundamental ways we think about ourselves, on our most fundamental ways we interact with each other, we interact with the world, and our fear, our anxiety is very powerful and changes our behaviors. We'll not, we will not go back to the past, even if we are in the most optimistic scenario with a 100% effective vaccine by late 2022, fully distributed and vaccinated. And that's a scenario which is super optimistic and very unlikely. So we will not go back there because again, even in that scenario, we'll have 
two had two plus years of having very different behaviors than we did before. And people's behaviors are the fundamental thing that drives social change, beliefs, behaviors. So that's something that you need to be prepared for as an individual professional when you're going about your life as person who manages their household, thinks about their household, as someone who manages a business to the extent that you're a business leader, you want to be thinking about this going forward. How will you adjust your business in that way? So these are the kind of fundamental things you want to be thinking about if you want to succeed and if you want to thrive in the new abnormal. That is absolutely fascinating. I've got a list of things I need to work on. I greatly appreciate the time. Um, we know it's incredibly valuable and obviously you're interviewing everywhere. Um, where is the best place for our listeners and viewers to go to get a copy of the book, Resilience, Adapt and Plan for the New Abnormal of the COVID-19 Coronas Pandemic? Well, they're certainly available in bookstores everywhere, but you probably want to avoid bookstores for now on those closed indoor spaces. So you can certainly go online, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, other venues like this. My own resources are on disasteravoidanceexperts.com. Videos, blogs, podcasts, decision aids, guides, manuals, online classes, coaching, training. Especially check out disasteravoidanceexperts.com forward slash subscribe for a free eight video based class, eight video based module class on making the wisest decisions. Again, disasteravoidanceexperts.com forward slash subscribe. All right, this has been Seth Green with Dr. Greg Sapersky from disasteravoidance.com slash subscribe. Go get the book get the course. Dr. Gleb, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate the opportunity, Seth. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We'll talk to you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free Perfect Pitch Cheat Sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.